I was given this old orchard tractor uh, a few months ago. It's a 5566 three cylinder diesel. It had been sort of superseded by a newer machine and uh, they just had it sitting around on the orchard so um, they gave it to me. I actually ended up giving the guy like $1,500 for it because you know it's too good to just give away. These tyres are basically brand new. I had a few problems when I got it. The clutch was slipping. Uh, it wouldn't take off in the high gears. But I managed to get that sorted by adjusting the clutch down here. The clutch is working okay now. All the gears are working and it's not slipping anymore. And another thing was the PTO clutch here was seized up. The guy told me he couldn't use that anymore because it was there was something broken. But I managed to get it moving. It just takes a bit of effort to, to get it moving. But um, when it started giving problems with the clutch and the PTO, uh, they just parked it up and, and sort of left it outside for for a few years and uh, just sort of forgot about it. It might just need a bit of maintenance and uh, freeing a few things up, like the, the gears are quite stiff and the, it's hard to get into some gears, but that could just be uh, a bit of rust in the linkages or something, so I'll try and sort that out today. It has had quite a hard life on the orchard, like they didn't do much maintenance to it. Basically all oils and filters need changing so I'll do that today and um, yeah just give it a good going over and try and free up any stuck parts. I've just been waiting for parts basically because like the air filter I inquired in New Zealand um, the cheapest I could find was $360 for a new air filter so I looked offshore and found one for like $25. It's not quite the same but it's it's the same length and diameter so I think it'll do the job. Um, so yeah I'll replace that because you can see the mice have been nibbling on that. Alright last time I couldn't find the level for the gearbox oil but a few people commented that there's a, a plug under the seat so I think that might be it there. Clean that up a bit so that no dirt falls in. So hopefully there's a dipstick on the end of this. Aha! There is too. That isn't even on the stick there. That definitely needs oil. I'll dump that oil out and renew it as well. That oil is quite dirty actually. Right, that didn't have anywhere near enough oil in it. Um, there's only like probably four litres in there, plus what's coming out still. So maybe maybe five litres. And um, I don't know what these hold, but I'm guessing it's probably more like 20 litres. So yeah, that could be the cause of some of the problems. It's a wonder that the hydraulics still worked with that amount of oil in there. That up there looks like it might be another drain plug. Possibly. Oh, let's see if I can pull that out. And there might be a little reservoir of oil behind there. Maybe. There's quite a bit of metal on that magnet. It's fairly fine, so hopefully it's just like wear and tear. There's the odd long piece, but it's it's mainly just fine metal flakes. So anyway, not much we can do about that at the moment. Let's just chuck some oil in it and see what happens. Okay. 
there's a little bit of swarf in that thread which is why I always like to give the thread a bit of a clean you see that there Super Cheap Auto have um, sent me a gift card to buy oil, so I've bought this Farm Oil STOU, uh, it's like a multi-purpose tractor oil. It exceeds the minimum requirements for the tractor and the manual, so it would be perfect for this. Yeah, so I can use that in the diff and the vinyls and everything, um, gearbox, all that. So yeah, very helpful because, you know, it's quite a few hundred dollars worth of oil do a service on one of these tractors, so good old super cheap coming to the party. It seems like a very silly place to put a filler plug under the seat. But we'll manage. Right, that's looking pretty good now, it's up to the line. So I'll give it a bit of work. Keep an eye on that oil level, make sure it's not leaking out anywhere. I can't see any leaks there yet. I just, I just wonder why it, it was so low. Usually when a gearbox is that low, there's a leak somewhere. But um, Like there is a bit of oil down the back end there. But it doesn't seem to be pouring out. It's just like a slow weep I think. But It makes me think if it's coming through the clutch side. But... You can see that there is a little drain plug up there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's nothing coming out of there yet. So I guess we'll just keep an eye on that. If it starts coming through then uh, I'll probably have to split the tractor and uh, do the seal, but nothing coming through yet. Now the gears are quite stiff to move. It pivots on this end point and the shaft goes in and out. Maybe it's just a bit dry, so I'll add a bit of oil there and just see if that helps. Probably didn't help that the gearbox oil was so low either. Let's try that. That's feeling a lot better. Just needed a bit of oil in there, I think. Yep, that's a lot better. Just, I guess just being, sitting out in the rain so long, it's, uh, it's just seized up, you know. That one there is pretty stiff, but it is freeing up now. That wasn't moving at all before, so that's a big improvement. I think with a bit of use, that'll gradually loosen up. That's a lot better than it was. Yeah. good oh that was a nice easy fix I was uh, wondering if there's something going on in the gearbox there but I think it's just because it was sitting out in the weather so long um, it just sort of all rusted up in those pivot points That's about four litres in the engine. We'll tip that out and see what's at the bottom there. That doesn't look too bad. There's no big chunks in there or water or metallic um, pieces. So yeah, maybe the engine's not too bad. That one's been on there for a few years. You can see the rust there. We'll 
do this fuel filter as well. So we'll give that a quick bleed, get the air out of the system. Good, all the air out of the filter. Done. That's... Alright, this is the wheel from the front diff. That's filthy. You can see a little bit of metallic fleck in there, but... Yeah, no big chunks. It was definitely due for an oil change. Have a look what was sitting in the drain plug. What is that? Yeah, it's not metal. It's kind of soft and possibly gasket material I think because there's a bit of crud in there I'll just give it a quick flush with um, diesel just to try and stir up what's at the bottom and flush it out Three liters in the front diff. A little bit higher. <coughs> oh, I think it's got a bit of a leak in, in the jack, has it? Or was that one of those tree frogs? Keep on going until that wheel goes off the ground. Good boy. That should do it. Wider. That'll do you, mate. Well, it's good to see all the, the diff and the final drives are holding the wheel. There's a little bit of a leak in that one, I can see, but it doesn't look too bad. There doesn't seem to be any antifreeze in the radiator, just dirty water. So I'll drain that out and put some antifreeze in there, just in case we get a cold winter. Our steering fluid is looking quite dark so I'll dump that out and renew it. I think there's a filter in there somewhere. Not quite sure how to get that out. Oh yep, yeah, that pops out. Is that some sort of filter? Can't even bloody get hold of it. What a stupid design. How the hell are you supposed to get that out of there? Uh -huh. Got him. Oh, yep. So that's a 
a washable filter. I'll give that a burst in the ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, that's really filthy. Now the last thing I have to do is um, change this air filter because the one in there has been bitten by mice and it's got a hole in it. I did get a price for one in New Zealand, the best I could do was 360 delivered. I wasn't going to do that, they are quite an interesting design, it's like attached to the end cap and it's conical. Um, you can see where the mice have been eating it there, I've managed to find one. Of a similar length and diameter um, on AliExpress that comes with an inner as well and that there was $25 so yeah much better value but I've just got to make figure out a way of holding it in there because it obviously doesn't have the cap on the end so um, I'll have to make some sort of spacer there just so it pushes it up against the end and holds it in there I mean I could probably just cut this at the right place actually I think that'll work out quite well maybe if we just cut it pretty much flush with that metal and um, that, that should be big enough to hold it in there if not I'll just make a little spacer or something but I don't really want anything cutting into that, that foam there um, it wants to be like a flat surface pushing against that so I'll just try and rip that filter off and use the cap That feels pretty good. There's a bit of compression there pushing the filter into this end face. So that's nice and snug in there. That's going to keep any dust out of the engine. That's another job done. You can see how much paper in these things. Quite a bit of paper in there, eh? Yeah, full of dirt. So good to get that done. So that's pretty much everything done. All the oils and filters. So I'll go around and hit all the grease points and then uh, we'll put the back blade on it and give it some give it some hard work and see how it handles it. And brake that's a bit sticky. Okay. 
So I've put the back blade on it now. Um, I'm going to drag that along and get all the pine needles off the track here. This is my four-wheel drive track and it gets a bit slippery with all the pine needles on it. So uh, just angle the blade to the outside and should just scrape them all off to that outside edge. It is quite a steep track so it'll be a good test for it, especially coming back up because I'll have to sort of go up and down and do a few passes. I usually do this with the, with the David Browns but um, they're only two-wheel drive so it does tend to slip a bit. Being four-wheel drive I think this will handle it a lot easier. So we'll see how she goes. perfectly it didn't miss a beat it's not overheading at all it's just sort of just coming up to the green so no problems at all there I noticed there is a little bit of a diesel leak there which I'll have to tighten up but um, so it's so much better having four-wheel drive doing the doing the steep track with the blade because um, I can grade down and up whereas with the other tractors they start slipping if I'm pulling a pulling the blade upwards so yeah that's a heck of a lot quicker than it would have been with the David Browns. It's got a surprising amount of power for such a little machine. Like, 
I, I was just basically idling most of the time and um, yeah it didn't bog down or anything with it and that four-wheel drive just makes it so much better there's no oil leaks that I can see which is, surprises me I kind of expected something to leak uh, since there was so little oil in the gearbox and the clutch didn't slip at all there's no problems at all there um, I kind of half expected it to to give trouble but no it works perfectly well uh, it is quite narrow so I might I might end up um, turning the hubs around so that uh, this face is against the hubs is against the axle and that'll bring it out probably six inches so that'll widen the stance and make it a wee bit more stable but um, it didn't feel like it was going to tip over at all it's just like well, if you go in a dip it tilts over more than it would have if it had a wider stance but yeah yeah it's probably like a four or five thousand dollar machine now um, after all the, after the maintenance and uh, fixing up those few little problems another one for the uh, fleet <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, catch you next time.